cool. All right. So the first thing you guys said was like a major priority was looking at that thermo question number three. So let me just pull that out from our mock exam. Um, I'll kind of just talk through it and also use the marking schedule. And I've made some notes on where common mistakes were, if you guys want to make some notes too. Um, <clears throat> things like that. Um, I will also grab some markers. Markers or pens? Markers. Um, I will try to avoid doing a lot of writing because I'm mindful that it may not be terribly, terribly useful to you guys. Um, unless I feel that the question really kind of needed it. So, this first one here is given uh, the structural formula of urea. Uh, this one here was something that had a lot of common mistakes because a lot of you guys didn't read the question. There's intermolecular attractive forces. Most of you guys had no problem giving me those. Uh, in this case, it's going to have all three of them because you notice, or sorry, let me backtrack. All organic molecules are going to have those temporary uh, dipole dipole um, attractions. All of them will have it, um, and that's just because you know they are electron clouds. They will temporarily kind of cluster in an area, and then you're going to get a temporary dipole. Um, this, the next two, you have to ask yourself. Is it a polar molecule? When I look at that, I see nitrogen, I see oxygen. That's a polar molecule. So I know that's also going to be permanent dipole-dipole uh, attractions. Are we good with that? Next one here, um, some of you guys missed out, is the hydrogen bonding. Remember, with hydrogen, I'm looking for hydrogen that's attached to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So this oxygen here does not do hydrogen bonding because it's just an oxygen by itself. But this one here, because it's attached to a nitrogen, does. So this one has the hydrogen bonding. Are we good with that? All right. Silly thing you guys did then is you're like, cool, I am done. And you didn't read the question in one of the uh, intramolecular forces as well. Basically, that you identify that there's covalent bonds there. So that's where you guys missed out. Luckily, that was only an achieved point, so it wasn't the end of the world if you got that one wrong. Are we okay with that so far? All right. Next one here was looking at the specific intermolecular attractions between water and urea uh, that result in urea being soluble in water. So the first thing you guys got to keep in mind, uh, I don't think too many people had this one wrong, but remember that urea is soluble, so you know from that information already that urea is going to be polar. All right. Um, this is actually a throwback to level two because it's a very common level two question asking about water solubility. Um, but in this case, what they were looking for is if you talked about the various uh, types of bonds that are there. So I'll just show you guys the question. Um, but basically what they were looking for is if you understood there was temporary, permanent, and hydrogen bonds in both of those molecules, um, and that the attraction to the water molecule is greater than the attraction to itself. Very kind of typical stuff that you guys got for last year for your um, structure and bonding uh, component. The thing that let a lot of you guys down are the second two components here, and that is explaining the hydrogen bond attraction between the urea and the water. Um, urea is quite a complicated molecule when you're looking at it because of where it's slightly positive and where it's slightly negative. So what I will do is I will draw it out on the next page so you guys can see it. Ugh, that was a very tiny, odd box they gave you. And I might do it with my smaller, sharp, or not sharp, these uh, pens, so that way you can see it a bit better. So what I'm going to do is just draw my urea molecule down. And a lot of this, like the organic chemistry test, also gave you some really hard molecules, and I'm very sorry about that. Um, anyway, let's draw urea, and I want to draw completely extended so that way I can see where all the bonds are. Are we okay with that so far? All right, thinking about electron negativity and what is gonna pull where. So my um, oxygen is very electron negative. It's gonna pull those electrons closer. That's gonna be slightly negative there. Cool. Over here, I have nitrogens. Remember, nitrogens are also going to be negative. So this and this will show negativity as well. 
And then the hydrogen um, atoms over here, remember they're not very electronegative, they're just that one proton. So when those shared electrons get pulled away, you're just exposing that positive nucleus. So that section's all positive. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, so then we need to draw in the water molecules and we need to think about how the water molecules are oriented in reference to the urea to show that it is soluble. So when I am thinking about this, remember that water is H2O, the um, oxygen N is gonna be slightly negative and the hydrogen N is gonna be slightly positive. So what I'm trying to show is that basically this urea molecule is gonna be surrounded because there are multiple positive and negative components. So for example, I could draw my water molecule like this and the two positive ends are now being attracted to the two slightly negative ends of the urea. Does that make sense? Oh, that should be negative. Let me keep to my color code, guys. Slightly negative, slightly positive. Because you should always have a, a positive and a negative. Opposites attracts. Are we okay with that? And that's how you're supposed to draw. It was a very hard question in that sense because we were asking to draw something that was quite unusually shaped. You guys also haven't thought about this stuff since level two. Um, so basically what I would have here is my water molecule in the other direction. So that way the um, oxygens are lining up with the hydrogens there. That's all positive. Cool. And then lots of hydrogen bondings. That looks like a little mess, but that's what we we're looking for. Uh, Rebecca. Uh, I was just going to say, does that so long as it's lined up yeah. roughly. So I'll show you guys what the answer was. So this is what they were looking for. And you're just kind of showing that you know that this hydrogen is attracted to the water, or sorry, the oxygen of the water. Is that, so long as you got that idea down, you got your points. But a lot of you guys struggled with this because um, you didn't fully extend the urea and this, you couldn't get all the positive and negative areas. We good so far with that? All right, cool. Oh, this one was a heating curve. I love this question because you guys did this in year nine. Uh, it was a nice little throwback. Um, and it's really great kind of showing like the stuff that you do in year nine ties back into the senior school. Um, this is just your standard heat curve. The main thing to kind of keep in mind, solid, liquid, gas, those things are increasing in temperature because those uh, molecules or I should say particles are able to move faster, they have more connected energy, and that's what we measure when we measure temperature. There are two areas of flat lines, and those flat lines is when you're getting your state change, thus showing you guys melting point and boiling point. Um, so that's what we were basically looking at for that question. Uh, the other thing we were looking for is that you recognize what bonds were there. Um, so again, because we're talking about urea, it's the uh, temporary, the permanent, and the hydrogen bonds. Um, the other thing that we are looking for in that question, still in B, uh, is that you understood what was happening in that flat section and why that temperature wasn't changing. So uh, this first section of the um, thermo, those two sections only go, went up to a merit. So very unusual that you haven't had any excellence points so far. Questions so far? You guys good? Good? All right, this one here is your uh, compare and contrast with the attractive forces. This one did go up to the excellence level. So this case we have propan on and urea. Uh, again, we're talking about the intermolecular forces and I was looking to make sure you had all the list. Uh, if you guys were lazy, you just said, oh, urea has hydrogen bonding and propan on oh, does not have hydrogen bonding. Um, that really limited your grades because when you look at the marking schedule, um, the excellence needed all attractive forces. So you need to mention that, you know, there's temporary dipoles in both of them, there's permanent dipoles in both of them. Uh, this propanon is still a polar molecule because of that oxygen there. So that's where a lot of you guys lost your points. Uh, the other thing is making sure you label your answers well. So something that I noticed going through it is that and this is very common with the melting and boiling point is that you don't give me enough layers. So you need to talk about the strength of the bond and then the strength of the bond 
uh, relates to how much energy is required to break it. And then with that amount of energy, if it's high or low, that then ties into the melting and boiling point being high or low. So just make sure you have all your layers. A lot of you guys rush your answers and then you forget the last bit about tying it back into melting and boiling point, or you forget to talk about uh, energy altogether and you just say, it's a strong bond, so it's going to have a high uh, melting point. And that's not your full layers. Does that make sense? So if I wrote layers or rushing, it's because you're missing something there. Um, the other kind of mistake that I saw on this one is that you guys looked at the 60 and the 58 and you're like, oh, 60 is such a big number compared to 58. That's a difference of two. That is basically the same number. So what I was looking at for the excellence was making sure that you understood that both of these guys have relatively similar molar mass. Since they have relatively similar molar mass, they're going to have relatively similar uh, temporary dipole-dipole attractive forces. Does that make sense? Because there's nothing in here that suggests one of these is like a drastically bigger atom. Um, you guys have seen that when you guys are dealing with stuff like bromine. So this often will get compared, like you'll get um, a bromomethane versus bromine the gas, and bromine the gas will have a higher melting and boiling point. And in that case, you're talking about the fact that it's such a large atom. This case, what you were trying to talk about was that they are similar masses. So keep that in mind. Think again, because it says contrast the boiling points, layering your answers so that way you can have a however, although, that sort of thing. So you'd be like, although they have similar masses and would have then similar temporary dipole bonds, and even though they both have permanent dipole bonds because of the carbonyl, um, urea, however, has an aiming group or sorry, I should say two aiming groups, which is going to give it hydrogen bonding. And therefore, you know, those are really strong bonds, and that's going to make my um, require more energy to break, and thus my higher boiling point. Does that make sense? So this one here was just a matter about um, layering and getting all your things. This one did go up to the excellence point, so do kind of keep that in mind. So my recommendation for this one is make sure you have your layers. I might write that down. So strength of attractive forces, energy, and then therefore, you know, related back to the melting point or the boiling point. That's a general rule. Other things to keep in mind, this was uh, similar. So same temporary dipole-dipole. Um, Attractive forces. I'm just going <laughs> to, you guys know what that is because I just made that up. Um, and then also the different types. So making sure you have them all listed. Don't just shortcut and forget somebody. Okay. So remember all of them. Uh, many only talked about hydrogen. Cool. Anything else? You guys want me to jot down? Does that make sense? All right, last one. Last one here was just your typical um, equation, Hess's Law. I won't go through it because I have plenty of videos explaining how to do Hess's Law. Um, this was the answer, 134 kilojoules per mole. Most of you guys got that. Uh, if you guys didn't get it, the common mistake that I saw uh, was that you didn't multiply this equation by three. So this one here, you guys recognized that you needed to flip it. That was no issue. The mistake that a lot of you guys forgot to do was to multiply by three. Uh, and you needed to multiply by three in order to get things to cancel out, uh, such as the hydrogen um, and the oxygens. Does that make sense? Do you want me to go through it in more detail or is that okay? There's plenty of videos on Hess's Law, so I figured you guys would be okay. All right, cool. Anything about question number three that you need me to go over again, slower, more detail? Is that helpful in the gaps? All right, cool. So that is the third question for thermochemistry done. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, so that way we can have it as two separate lots and I'll do the first of the organic questions because that was the one that you guys requested the most. So that's next on the agenda.